Ariel Helwani post fight at UFC 159 alongside Brian Caraway, who just submitted Johnny Bedford in the third round. And Brian, congratulations. We found out that you were taking this fight on Monday. When did you find out? Five days. I think it's a UFC record. I think the other closest one was leaving at seven. So I think I have the UFC record for shortest fight, you know, time to take the fight. Well, that is unbelievable. And congratulations. How much did you weigh when you found out that you were offered this fight? 158 and a half pounds, five days. So I lost, uh, what was that, 23 and a half pounds, something like that. Uh, it was really rough, needless to say. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I'm uh, coming out of here with a win over a very tough opponent, so I'm super stoked. Was there a point you thought maybe you wouldn't be able to make the weight? Um, absolutely. Three times I felt like I was almost broken. Like I, I didn't think I was going to make it. My whole right side was cramping up, my feet, my leg, my hamstring. I didn't think I was going to be able to push on. But uh, I just you know, prayed to Jesus Christ our Lord. and. Uh, you know, I told the UFC event, Bert was yelling at us, say, you know, get him in the way. And I said, I don't care if you kick me out of the UFC. I don't care if wh whatever happens, I'm not leaving the sauna until I make weight. I don't care what it is. If the weigh-ins are at 4 o'clock, I'll leave here at 3.30, 3 you know, the latest I possibly can. But they're trying to come get me at 1 o'clock. I said, it's not happening. I had to argue, have my corner argue with Bert for about two hours to uh, let me make the weight. And, and uh, you know, Bert was actually really cool about it, and I made the weight. What time did you make the weight? How long did you need? Oh man, I was the last one in the sauna uh, for a long time. I don't think I got out of there till almost 2.33. And uh, it was an hour van ride here and I barely made it in time to line up for the weigh-ins. And uh, I just couldn't be more happy. Considering that struggle, how did you feel in the cage tonight? Uh, surprisingly, I felt really, really good actually. You know, I, I was a little tired. I didn't have any training camp beforehand. Misha was getting ready for her fight and I, you know, over, oversee that whole thing so and watch her. So I, I was in Vegas for about a month and I didn't really get any training at all, but it just shows you what your mind can do. You know, I felt out of shape before, but when I got in the cage, I felt, felt ready to rock and roll. That's what makes this late submission even more impressive because, you know, typically you get more tired as the fight goes on. You were drained yesterday. You take this fight on short notice. And I believe one of the more, one of the latest submissions in UFC history, the point in time that it happened in the fight, that's a, that's a pretty good feather in your cap. Yeah, you know, I was really stoked. I heard my corner saying, hey, you know what, short time, you're winning the fight, go for something. And uh, that's a guillotine I really set up and like really well. It's kind of tricky. And, uh, you know, I said, what do I got to lose? I'm going to go for it. And uh, pay dividends. And, you know, the weight cut thing was actually, I think, more of a positive than negative because mentally going through that, I was so proud of myself that I realized making it through that as bad as I felt, no fight in the world, no, ma no matter of adversity will be tougher than that. So uh, I was just stoked to get in there. I wasn't worried about anything. Was this almost a positive for you? Because you've talked about some of the, the mental struggles that you've had. This time you didn't have to overthink the fight. You didn't have time to overthink the fight. Absolutely. Um, you know, having a short notice didn't give me a lot of time to stress about things. Or my main problem is overanalyze everything. I try to be very intellectual. And uh, sometimes that nips me in the butt is I think too much about things. Uh, another thing is Johnny Bedford was my teammate on the Ultimate Fighter. And uh, so I was very confident going into there knowing his skill set, although he has been improving a lot. But I just really felt like I had that mental edge over him. Finally, and I, I spoke to Misha about this uh, when she was on my show recently, you received some criticism, and she did as well, for some of the things she said in your corner, and you lost your last fight, um, maybe somewhat controversially. Did you feel like you had something to prove, considering how your fight against Mitsugaki went? Um, you know, I think I won the Mitsugaki fight. Um, you know, I don't know what the heck the judges are thinking. I rewatched the fight several times. I won round one and round two. Definitely lost round three. But, uh, you know, I, I really wasn't honestly Misha's fight. Our camp, everybody uses different terminology for different things. Coast for me is not go forward and brawl because I don't back up. I come forward, I go hard, I push hard, and they say, hey, settle, settle in, you can coast. Coasting for me is still being very, very active. And uh, that actually wasn't her. She was wearing the, the mic, and it was actually our lead, our other lead corner was telling her, and then she would tell me because I can hear her voice the best. So that wasn't Misha Tate's fault at all she was just doing what she was told she's more there for mental uh, mental support than anything else but uh yeah coasting for me for me is totally different than what most people think brian congratulations on an amazing performance looking forward to what's next for you awesome thank you arawani as always uh, it's a pleasure